Hello everyone, Loremaster of Sotek here, and buckle up. We got a lot to talk about, and as much as in my head, I tell myself, please God, don't make this over 10 minutes, otherwise it's going to get out of hand. It's probably going to be a lot longer, and I apologize in advance. If you look at this video and you see that it's 30 minutes long or longer, get yourself a cup of tea. Alright, let's get into it. There's a lot going on in the world right now, and here on the channel... I was determined to be silent about it. I was determined to try and remain neutral, or at the very least, state my opinions privately. State my opinions on Twitter, or in my home, to my friends. Go out, join the protests, uh, donate to various causes, but, at the, but keep it away from here. And then I started to think about why? Why would I do that? And I realized that the only justification... There were two justifications behind that idea. Number one, if I come out heavy in support of it, there's a good chance it could hurt the channel. There's a good chance it could hurt me financially. There's a good chance that it could cause some really horrible people to go out of their way to harass me. And the second reason is that a lot of people come here to escape from the real world. A lot of people come here to get away from... From stressful or anxiety causing or rage inducing news. However, and while I acknowledge those points, the first ones I find too selfish for my personal leaning. The second points, while I understand that, and I can assure you this won't be a normal thing here, I cannot be silent. Because if I am silent, then that may imply to some people that I am complacent, which I am not. If I say nothing, then there are those who will feel that I don't care or I care more about my wallet or my status than I do about doing the right thing. And I'm not okay with that. I cannot sleep because every day I would get up and I would read everything happening and I would want to talk about it, but I couldn't. Because in my head, it was bad for the community. It was bad for me to state my opinions on what's going on in the world. And it would hurt everything that I'm trying to do. My business, my livelihood, my paycheck. So I thought, uh, okay, I'll talk about it on Twitter. I still couldn't sleep because my guilt was eating at me every day. I would see something horrible and think, I should talk about this, I should talk about this, I should talk about this, and then I just couldn't. And then when I got up this morning, uh, because when you stay up a long time, eventually you'll collapse due to exhaustion, like I do, and the problem is, when I oversleep, I do not, I do not oversleep by sleeping for 12 hours, I oversleep by sleeping for about 30 hours. So entire days have just been missed by me. I've missed two days out of this week. Which you may notice, I have not been publishing videos a lot because I haven't not been awake very much. Because I sleep when I'm stressed. And that's like a really hard thing for me to deal with because it hurts my health to be sleeping that much. You know, it makes me feel really nauseous and sick when I'm awake because I haven't eaten in many, many hours. And I haven't taken my anti-anxiety pills, which if I don't take those, it messes with my brain. And like makes me feel all foggy and it hurts and stuff. So... Then, I woke up this morning, and I saw that Cinema Winds had put out a video called Silence. And he basically talked about, he basically said everything that I feel of, you know, when you're someone in our positions, a YouTube creator, for instance, you feel like you shouldn't say anything for myriads of reasons. And so you don't. But then his video points out why that's not okay. And I agree with that. Um, and I have a lot of my own opinions on that. So, here we are. I have to talk. I cannot be silent any longer. Posting on Twitter about it is not acceptable. This is my platform. This is my house. This is my throne, whatever you want to call it. I need, for my sanity to say what is in my heart. So, here we go. I do want to state that 
I'm going to be using some strong language and issuing some strong opinions, but I want to make absolutely sure that everyone understands that what I'm doing is very, very difficult. And you may roll your eyes at that, but like I said earlier, this is my life. This is my home. This is everything I do. This is my income. What I'm about to do may jeopardize that, may threaten it, may harm it. And so in light of that, I do not, I, I may say some, I'm, some of the, most of what I'm saying is unscripted because I want it to be genuine and not like planned out because I find that a little too mechanical sometimes. So I want to say that do not take what I'm doing here as a call to action towards other creators. Every creator is an individual human being and they all have to make their own choices. For some of them, they do not have a backup. I have a backup. There are things I could do besides this to make money. I live in a home where with others. So if suddenly something happened, I would not be out on the streets. So I have a lot of safety nets in place that other people may not have. So do not take what I'm doing and then go and attack other creators, I beg of you. Be considerate, be thoughtful. Realize that for someone doing this might be too fear causing or anxiety inducing. The first time I sat down to make one of these videos, uh, make this video, I nearly had a panic attack. Um, and I had to like pull away and I'm like, I'm gonna go play Heinrich Kimmler for a little while to calm down. Um, and it, it's been very hard. It's been very hard. It's scary. I was shaking when I was considering making this video because all the ramifications were passing through my head. So, yeah. Don't, please don't go to any other people, uh, creators, and be like, Oh, Lord Master Sotek is making a statement. Why aren't you making a statement? Leave them alone. Okay? Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Let's get into it. One thing I have to address before I, before I really get to talk about what's going on in the world, there's someone I have to talk about first. And that's because there's been game. So for those unaware, Games Workshop came out on Twitter um, and very heavy, heavy handedly made their opinions clear on what's going on right now. And they basically said police brutality bad. You know, we really want all these different communities to be a part of our um, culture and community. We're very aware of the fact that Warhammer Fantasy or not Warhammer, sorry, uh, Fantasy, but Warhammer, all of the Warhammers um have been due to the way they were designed in the 80s and the way culture was back then going and going forward they have not been very inclusive and they're working very hard to change that they're trying really hard to introduce people of color to introduce different communities to introduce um different sexualities and all these different things into the setting to a make them more realistic and b make it so that it's not just a white dude hobby anymore because it shouldn't be um I want as many people to experience the joys of Warhammer as possible. And I'm glad they shared that. And they also said that if you don't support that, then you can get the hell out. We don't want your business. We don't want your support. Leave. And I'm so glad they said that. However, in response to that, there were a number of comments and Twitter threads and Reddit posts asking about a particularly large member of the Warhammer community. Most of the Warhammer community is very reasonable. They're very level-headed, they're very inclusive, they want the setting to be as healthy as possible, they want it to make as much money as possible, and to make the most money, you need to have the most people, which means you need to make it more inclusive. You know, we want the setting to be grim dark. we want the setting to... Uh, you know who has a great video on this? Major Kill. Which I need to say, I owe that man an apology, because I watched one video of his a really long time ago, made up my mind about him, and never thought about it again. And I don't know if he's just, like, changed, or if he, if, like, the channel's always been much more of a parody thing than I realized. But, uh, yeah, I owe that man an apology for judging him too harshly, because he has a video, uh, I'll link down in the description below, or the top comment, where he really knocks out of the park about why Warhammer being more inclusive is a great idea. Um, I don't want to, like, net say that I agree with everything he does, because I haven't watched that much stuff, but I watched that one video and it was awesome. So, uh, yeah, good job, mate. Anyway, um, I don't I don't know if he hates me or not. I don't care. But anyway, <laughs> um, I ha so who am I talking about? And I'm talking about Arch Warhammer. Now, Arch Warhammer has been the dark skeleton in the closet of the Warhammer community for like the last five to six years or whatever it's been. He started YouTube about six months before I did. Uh, and back in the day, uh, me and him, I even worked with him back in the day uh, one time. 
before I realized that he literally knew absolutely nothing about Warhammer Fantasy lore, and he was literally just someone who would come up and read, like, a wiki, or just talk randomly and insert his opinions every three seconds instead of just giving you the lore. And he was a horrible storyteller, and I hated the way he did things, and I decided never to work with him again. And then a little while later, he had some big thing where he basically came out and called, like, trans people all subhuman and all this other crazy shit. And I was like, wow, he's, like, really gone off the deep end, so I just don't want to talk about him. Uh, I decided that he was either a horrible troll or just a super sexist bigot. And either way, I do not like to feed trolls, so I just don't comment on them. Because usually the best way on the internet to handle something hateful is to ignore it. Because if you ignore it, you don't give it a platform, therefore it starves and dies over in the corner. Um, however, it did not occur to me that by not ever saying anything about Arch, it has caused a situation where people think I'm afraid of him, or people think that, like, the community's afraid of him. But let me make this very clear. The reason, and I'm going to speak for all other creators on this, uh, because I've spoken to many of them about it, and I bet, and I know how they feel about it. And some may come out and say something now that this is kind of hitting the fan, but others may not. And the reason is, if you talk about someone like Arch, you're providing an open door. You are allowing him to make a response. You're allowing him to focus his moronic, um, idiot gaggle of a community to basically be sniper focused onto you. Many of whom are bored, stupid nerds who have nothing better to do than just constantly harass someone on the internet. And if you're someone that's very, very easy to be insulted, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean, like, if you're someone who you struggle with anxiety, you struggle with self-depreciation, if you're getting a lot of hateful comments on the internet, that can really be hurtful. That can be really scary. You know, you could be dealing with death threats, who knows. Uh, but his community is toxic garbage, and he's toxic garbage. And so a lot of, none of us wanted to talk about him because we didn't want to give him an opportunity to interact. We didn't want to give him the ability to play the victim, even though he's this scalding piece of hot garbage. You know, he's a smooth brain cabbage that thinks it's so amazing. You know, this is a guy who seems to genuinely believe that if we had the Imperium of Man from 40k as our actual world, that things would be better. Completely missing the dock on the fact that the whole point of 40k is how fucking horrible the Imperium is. And how un inhumane they are. They're the opposite of humanity. They're the worst of everything we are put into a single setting. Which is very fascinating. And makes for an excellent, like, eternal war scenario. Because everybody there sucks. But... Arch worships them like some kind of fucking glue-sniffing dipshit. I mean, there are a lot of words that I could use, but I'm trying really hard not to. In any event, I just want to make it really clear that he's just the worst. He's a piece of sexist, racist garbage who doesn't deserve any support. He doesn't deserve any success. Everything he's done is an empire built on shitting upon and hating people who can't defend themselves because he's constantly punching down. He has made a business out of not really knowing anything. From my understanding, he's as bad at 40k lore as he is at fantasy lore, which is genuinely amazing. Uh, considering that he's such a hallmark in the 40k community. A lot of people, he's the first one they find just because he has so many subs. And I don't know if that's because that many people just really enjoy the fact that he's a racist piece of shit. Or if they just see him as the first 40k channel they ever learned. So they sub because they're like, wow, 40k is kind of interesting. And they don't find out for a long time. Either because they don't watch enough of his videos to see some of his more famous rants. Or because, I don't know. But in any event, I just want to say that you suck. You're a piece of shit. Uh, I don't have the energy or the care to hate you. But I do pity you. I really hope you get help, Arch. I don't know what in your life caused you to think black people are subhuman animals. I don't know what caused you to go on incredible rants that uh, very a lot of different uh, minority groups are lesser than white people and that somehow they are superior. I don't know why you hate women so much. I don't know why you hate trans so much. Like, I can't tell if you just don't have a soul 
or maybe you're such a small tiny weak little person that you see everything as a threat so you feel the need to lash out against anything that doesn't conform to being a mirror of yourself because i <laughs> it's it's impressive how sad you are so i hope you get help man i hope you go to a therapist start to work out your issues maybe get better and maybe one day you could be like an incredible story of someone who learned to be a pillar of a community that people actually respect instead of being more like a wild shit covered gorilla in a zoo that everyone shows up to throw peanuts at because he just farts out incredibly inane comments constantly people are there to watch and laugh at you i wonder if you realize that anyway oh and for anyone that's curious why i feel so strongly about the subject i will gladly include a reddit thread down below in the top comment and the description that has a massive collection of all of the horrible shit he said on his personal discord server in addition uh, if you scroll down through the comments on them there is a very very alarming um set of discussions by one of his i don't know how many moderators he has because i couldn't read them without getting sick but he has a uh, moderator who very strongly supports the creation and consumption of child porn and defends it on a very regular basis so I'm assuming Arch is totally okay with that, since every creator has to handpick their mods on Discord. So, uh, way, way to really be the champion of the people there, Arch. Great job. Dipshit. Also, I just want to say, Wheels, a prophet. Man ahead of his time. What uh, He said Arch Warhammer is a dickhead. That's a great way to end it. Alright, moving on to actually things that matter. So, there's my opinion. Uh, okay, so let's talk about what's going on um, and why it's important. First of all, I want to make it really clear, Black Lives Matter. Period. End of story. I know that phrase may cause a knee-jerk reaction in some of you because a substantial amount of my community are white dudes from like the age of like 16 to 40. So I want to share with you my experience with that phrase. The first time I ever heard Black Lives Matter, I also had a knee-jerk reaction. Because if you're kind of a white guy, you hear that and you think to yourself, Am, are they saying I'm the bad guy? Like, are they saying that I don't matter? Are they saying that... Like, what, what are you saying? And because it's a very passionate subject, it's easy, ashamedly easy, for I think white men especially to see that as an attack. I want to make something really clear to you guys and um because it's something that it's you need to know when someone says black lives matter they are not saying you don't matter just like if they said if someone said save the rainforest you would not immediately assume that they're saying screw your local forest in particular no they're just saying that this community has been under attack for centuries and it's never stopped there have been many times where we have there's been like a big step forward or there's been a moment where we the you know white people especially have convinced ourselves that it's stopped it's never stopped it's never stopped and it's pitiful that we allowed ourselves to be convinced that it was just so we could feel better and move on with our lives so when they say black lives matter please realize that the full context is Black lives don't matter, but they should. Black lives need to matter. We need to remind people. Think about how think about how scary that is. They have to say it. They have to march for it. They have to protest to say black lives matter because that's not the default. You should never respond to them by saying, "Well, all lives matter." We know. Everybody knows. It's a it they're not saying nobody matters but black people. They're saying people matter, but we don't, and that's got to stop. And they're 100% right. I know, I know there has been a lot in the last decade, especially, where if you're a white guy, you... I get it, guys. I totally get it. There's a lot of stuff where you're kind of like... There's a lot of conversations here that feel like they're directed at me, and I can't tell if they're attacking me... Or if just, like, what's happening here? And there's a lot of discussion to be had on that, but now's not the time. Right now, these people need help. They really need help. And the really sad thing is, 
we can't afford to not get involved. We can't afford to just say, this doesn't involve me, I'm going to stay out of it. Because it does involve you. Because we, we have a position that's very loud. We are the majority. We are the people that... Whenever a cop is out there and they shoot and kill a black person, they're able to get away with it because everyone around them, everyone in power is just white. Everyone in power just assumes something happened. And they assume that all the voters, who are mostly white, are not going to do anything about it because they're just like, meh, it's not about me. And the, the scary thing is they're fucking right, dude. <laughs> we, we have to get involved. They can't win... You can't watch the protests and think, oh, they got that under control. No, they don't. The reason they're protesting is because nothing else is working. They've tried super peaceful stuff. They've tried kneeling in football stadiums. They've tried having really powerful leaders. They've tried having amazing speeches. They've tried making music. They've tried writing books. They've tried p other stuff in the past and nothing's working. Because we're... Because they can't do it alone. You're... You're watching men and women who the only difference... The only true difference is that a lot of the time they're poorer than us. And they have a different skin color. Getting... They're just getting beaten on the ground. They're drowning. And we look at that and go... Well, maybe they'll learn to swim. No. Help them. Now, I'm not saying you have to go out there and march. This shit's scary, dude. The police are going after everybody. I don't care what your skin color is. They're going to take your ass out. And for a lot of us, we don't have that as an option. I live in a house where if I go out and protest and I accidentally catch a pandemic, which is still going, and bring that home, I could kill my parents. I can't afford to take that risk. But you know what I can do? I can make this video. I can go on Twitter and support causes by retweeting, liking, and just doing what I can. I can donate what disposable income I can manage to various causes to help people who are being illegally detained and to help the hospital costs for people who have been brutally and savagely wounded because of police. These are all things we can do. These are all acts we can take. And I encourage you to go out and look. Really look. Do your research. Go out. Watch videos. Watch live streams. Don't just watch the news because they're, they're, they've lost... They're, they're, uh, they're, I don't even, I'm not going to get into that. The thing that broke me this morning... I watched a video that was taken during the murder of Philandro Castile. Hope I said that right. This was a man who was killed for literally no reason. I'm just going to go ahead and get that out of the way. So he was, he was just brutally shot and killed by cops for being a black guy. But the horrifying part, because that apparently wasn't, the, thought, the thing that ate my soul, and I said, I have to make a video on this, and if it goes over 30 minutes, fuck it, is that, I'm, and I'm going to have this linked in the description below, they put his wife and his daughter, or his, his partner and his daughter, in a, in a police car with a camera. And that camera has audio and visual, and it's on the internet. You can watch it. You should watch it. Because in that video, there's a woman who is screaming in agony because she knows that A, she's been illegally detained, first of all. B, she doesn't know what's happening to her partner. She doesn't know what's happening to the man she loves. She didn't even know in the video, despite the fact she's screaming in terror, that they murdered him. But you know what the most horrifying part is? Because that and him being murdered wasn't? Is the little girl. This is like a five or six year old. Who says to her mother to stop screaming... Because if she doesn't, she's scared the cops will kill her. But she says it in a way a five or six year old would say it. Where the grammar's not right, you know? Kind of in the cutesy way that kids talk. She fucking begs her parent to calm down so they don't kill her. 
And this little girl is not only having to try and calm down her mom, who's freaking out for all the right reasons, because she doesn't want her to die. Because she has a concept of that at that age. She is literally praying to God that her father, father figure is okay. Nope, he's not. He's dead. A child. An innocent, innocent little girl. I, I could, oh my God. She didn't deserve that. Nobody deserves that. But that, if that, that video alone should show you that things are fucked right now. Because this has been constant. Yeah, for us, you know, I saw, I had a, I had a response on Twitter that ate at me. Because it was this guy who basically said something along the lines of, Oh, I can't support you talking about this because I don't, I've heard about it. We need to move on. Fuck you. Do you hear yourself? Do you, do you hear yourself? Black people don't get to just move on. These people are dying. They're being attacked. They're being murdered for no reason. And then the murderers just walk away. They just get away with it. Nothing changes. Nothing happens. This has been going on for days decades for centuries it has to stop right fucking now it's not i want to make it clear that this doesn't end if you know they've arrested the cops who murdered george ford after the entire fucking planet mobilized they finally were like oh whoops and arrested these four men they haven't been charged, you know, we haven't gotten to their cases yet, because that could be a whole can of worms. But that's not where this ends. Even if all these men are convicted, this doesn't stop. The only time this stops is when things permanently change. There has to be an organization completely separate from the cops. It has, it should have no relation. It's got to be away from their, their disgusting union. All, because unions are a great thing. 99% of the time. But for fucking, the police union has lost their goddamn minds. Anyway, there needs to be an organization whose job is just to investigate cops who have complete authority over them. If a cop fucks up, if a cop fires a single damn bullet, these guys need to know why. They need to go in there and they, cops need to answer for every single little thing they do for at least the next five years. Because their trust has been completely broken. No one should trust the police. Nobody. Because there are so many murderers and torturers and rapists and other insane shit hiding among them that you cannot trust them because there's no way to know. There's... There are good cops. There are cities where the cops have handled this beautifully. And they have very few complaints. And the people love them. And they have great relationships. You know, in my very backyard, there are two completely different scenarios. To my knowledge, hopefully this doesn't age bad, the Denton police and the Fort Worth police have handled this really well. They've worked with the protesters. We haven't had any riots. There hasn't been any horrible, mur horrible you know catastrophes they've been working with them and things have been peaceful and great and then there's fucking dallas where dallas they've shot people with rubber bullets at their faces like complete morons you have the cops down in austin who are shooting people from elevated angles with these less lethal weapons which are bullshit by the way the, the way we handle protests needs to be completely rewritten tear gas not an acceptable thing to use anymore period rubber bullets those gotta go those gotta go police need to be certified they need to have hardcore training that they go through with a certification where if they fuck up it gets revoked and they never work as a cop again period end of story no more of this bullshit of them moving to the next town over and getting their job back no that's gotta stop there's a list of like five demands going around that you can Google like five. Uh, go look at that. This has got to stop. I, I believe 
and no, there are good cops out there. I'm friends with what what I think is a good cop. T to my knowledge, he's a good cop. He hasn't done anything ever bad. I've never heard about a situation. I've heard about him in bad situations where he handled himself with grace and beauty, and it was awesome, and I love him. But the problem is there's too many bad cops. There has to be nationwide reform. It has to change. There is not enough good cops for there to be any other any other answer because the bad cops have been here forever the bad cops have been killing people forever the bad cops have been avoiding consequences forever the bad cops keep getting hired and promoted forever it has to stop it's gotta stop is there anything else i need to talk about yes if you are someone who finds this video incredibly offensive or you're someone who thinks that I'm out of line, what, whatever, I would heavily encourage you to examine why you feel that way. If you think that this is like supposed to be a lighthearted fun place and I shouldn't have to talk about this, personally, I agree with you. I hate that I have to talk about this. I'm really sorry. I'm not sorry about my opinions, but I'm sorry that things have gotten so bad where I have to bring it up. Um, I won't do it again for a very long time, hopefully. I mean, if things continue to get worse, then I'll keep doing it. But hopefully I can just put it on Twitter and we can carry on with our Ogre Kingdoms Q&As and daily streams and have a good time. Um, if you're someone who thinks that the police are not in the wrong, if you're someone who thinks that, well, I'll start with you. I would really encourage you to do your research. Please. Please watch that video I'm going to put in the description. Please go read about all the black people who have been murdered over the last few years the last few decades, the last few centuries. Understand that it's the same thing over and over and over. It's just that instead of hanging them from trees, we just shoot them and say, oh, I was scared he had a gun. But it's the same thing. It hasn't changed. Please, try and have empathy for the people who are genuinely suffering. If you're someone that's, the only thing you care about is the looters, and you're saying they shouldn't be destroying these shops, yada, 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 you're right. The looters are wrong. They're rats that are coming out and taking advantage of a situation, but they would be coming out no matter what. It doesn't matter what the protest is about. It doesn't matter what a movement is about. If there's enough people that come out where the police feel they have to get involved, especially if the police are fighting those people, then looters have all the advantages because all the good guys are out doing other stuff. So the only way to deal with looters is for cops to stop being pieces of shit and work alongside their communities. It's time for the good cops to prove they're the good cops. It's time for the good cops to protect protesters. To allow them to gather in peace and protect their First Amendment rights. Because that way, if the protests are calm and relaxed and the police are working and walking with them, then if someone does try and be a looter, both of those sides can take them down. There are so many good videos out there right now of someone trying to be a rioter, of someone trying to be a looter, and the other protesters grab them and throw them to the cops because the cops are standing there patiently and working with them. And we cop the bad guy. That's how you solve it. Just stopping it? You gotta get your head out of your ass, man. Last thing. Second to last thing. If you're someone who thinks that black people are lesser than you, or you think that black people are innately more violent, you think black people are innately poor, you think black people are more prone to be bad people, you really need to take a good look in yourself. You need to understand that there's, a, there's this sy systematic ancient problem they're dealing with. You need to understand that statistics can be construed in really horrible ways. That just because something shows up statistically, it might not explain why that thing is happening. You need to understand that empathy is our greatest weapon to make a better world. I, I don't want to die. I don't want humanity to die. I want us to live incredibly long lives that are beautiful and wonderful where we can pursue our interests and explore the galaxy and the universe and do amazing things. And the only weapon we have that makes that possible is empathy. 
There's no technological marvel. There's no advance in industry. There is nothing that can be done that will succeed without empathy. Because without empathy, all we're going to do is constantly tear each other down. All we're going to do is make bigger, badder weapons. All we're going to do is just kill and destroy each other constantly. Tear each other down. Don't be that. Please. If you find you're a person that's obsessed with hatred, I've been there. I've been that guy. When I was younger, I did terrible things. I hurt people. Not physically. Well, I did a lot of terrible shit. I'm not someone that I would ever encourage anyone else to look up to because there are things I've done in my past I'm not proud of and I'm horribly ashamed of. I've hurt. <laughs> I've made mistakes. But you know what? I got better. I went to therapy. I realized what I was doing was wrong because I, I learned empathy. Don't let anyone ever try and convince you that empathy is something you're born with. Some people are, but not everyone. Some people's brains are wired to the point where maybe, maybe you just weren't born with a great understanding of it. Or maybe because someone's a different gender than you or a different color than you, you struggle to see them as you. If you struggle with that, you're not going to empathize with them. You need to learn that they're human and they're just like you. They have struggles like you. They suffer like you. But you can help them. You can be a hero. You can be a savior. You can be someone that if you were to die, it would break the hearts of the world rather than be celebrated. You're someone who, through small acts of kindness, can change the world. You could be remembered by someone as the man who saved them and never even know it. But the only way you're going to do that is you have to learn to empathize. You have to learn that everyone is a human being. Everyone is, the, everyone is similar. Everyone has built from the same fundamental blocks. We're all different. It's true. But when you break us down to our very core components, we're all human beings. Get help. Go see a therapist. Talk to people who are different. Very different. Try and learn what's awesome about them. What's unique about them. You know what's a project that I'm going to be picking up that I'm really excited about that I've never done before? I want to explore how we could make Warhammer Fantasy races from other cultures. Like, if we were to have a, you know, playable Araby... What could we take from the cultures of those people, of the people that live in like the Middle East, to really make something cool? What kind of monsters and super elite units and magic would the people of India want to see if the uh, if End was playable? What would the people of Japan want to see from Nippon? What would those what would the Chinese want to see from Cathay? What would you know, what would uh if if black communities had better representation who would they want to see it as what would we do with the amazons what would we do with there are human cultures in lustria and the southlands where would we see them anyway i'm gonna listen back to this to make sure i don't completely kill myself trying to or by talking in situations but at the end of the day um that's all i have to say for the moment. I have, I have so much more to say. But I, I, I don't want this to turn into a, like an endless thing. And I'm not going to bombard the channel with it. Please feel safe. Knowing that this will not be in Q&A videos. This will not be in live streams. This will not be in lore videos. Whatever. This is, this is exclusive to these rants. That hopefully I won't have to have again. Black Lives Matter. The police need a complete reform. You have to treat protesters better. You have to respect their First Amendment rights. You have to respect their right to protest. Cops can't just attack people because they say mean things to them. You have to be better. Thanks for watching, guys. Please stay safe. Whether you're out there protesting, whether you're watching from home, stay safe. Wear masks wash your hands the pandemic isn't over if anything it's about to restart bigger and badder than ever it's going to be scary and most importantly pay attention 
Don't dial out. It's good to take breaks, play video games, hang out with your friends, you know, watch fun TV shows, but you need to pay attention. You need to see what's happening. You need to know how people are being abused so that when the time comes for us to vote, you can make the right decision. Because there is a wrong decision and there is a right decision. Just going to say it. I love you all. And if you're someone in my community who especially is a minority, especially in my community, whether you're a person of color or a woman or trans or whatever, I don't know. I want you to know that I love you. I love you very, very much. And I care about you. I do. I don't know you, but I care about you. And I hope you're okay. And I know this is really scary, but I hope you know that the fight has hopefully begun to make things better. And God damn it, we're going to win. We're going to win. Take care of yourself and know that you are valued. You are wonderful. And you are not lesser. If you need to talk to me, for whatever reason, you have questions, concerns, you want to, I don't know. You can contact me on Twitter or on Discord. Great places to catch my attention. You can private message me. I read them all. Even if I might not respond, but I read them all. So I love you all very much. I value you all very much. You, each and every one of you deserves happiness, safety, safety. Security. Take care of yourselves.